Gospel according to Matthew chapter 24, 36 to 44. Unexpected hour. Sometimes the best things in life happen unexpectedly. Best adventures were never planned. It is hard to free ourselves from expectations. Not knowing is not a comfortable place to be. No one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father in heaven. Keep awake. You don't know what day the Lord is coming. Be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. There is anxiety associated with these words. There is urgency along with day of warning. The Matthew's Gospel writing uh, makes it more dramatic by bringing the story of Noah into the picture. The story of inattention, carelessness and misplaced priorities. Reading the story of Noah, we should be thinking, what's wrong with the people? They should have been ready. People fail to be watchful and were caught unprepared. Don't get me wrong, people were engaged in ordinary activities of life like eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. They're having good time. They uh, took no thought of the coming future, which helped uh, define both the character and the meaning of their present. Two persons were working in a field and uh, two people grinding at a mill. One may be taken and one left. No one knows that day our Lord is coming. The crisis is approaching and when it comes cannot be determined. No chronological calculations can be made, but it will surely come. So be ready. The future needs to be correlated with the present. Something happened, something happening, and something will happen in the future. It's not a dead end uh, story. There are many words used in the New Testament like the future to, to talk about the future. One of them is the word parousia which is clearly taught, frequently spoken about, and consistently applied. Every time the first century Christians gathered together, they greeted each other by saying one another, Mara Nada, come Lord. The expectation of God's return left our pulpit and placed it in a place, replaced it with the materialistic theology and self-gratification. Even while we don't know when, but the fact of his return and the purpose of his return should not be neglected. There are also other New Testament words like the day of the Lord, referring the day of judgment, the day of wrath. Another word is epiphania, talking about the appear or appearance or the mysterious appearance or becoming known. The another word is theophanies of the Lord, apocalypse uh, or apocalyptic, uncovering the eschaton or the eschatological events. No matter what kind of appearance it will be, as St. Paul says, it is a blessed hope. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, St. Paul says, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearance of the, God, the, appearance of the glory of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Advent is a time when the church intentionally celebrates the parousia, the coming of God, the presence or the arrival. In the Greek or Roman world, uh, this word is techno technically used for the celebration of an emperor's visit to an extended presence with a particular city or community. The president suit, presidential visit. In the life of the church, it is when we focus our uh, worship and, and thoughts, and particularly on the birth of Jesus Christ, his coming on earth on the first coming, and uh, prepare our hearts for the future return, the second coming of Christ in glory. The coming of Christ is an important even in the life of a believer because, first of all, it brings the final conquest of evil, the final judgment of the world. It completes the redemption of the redeemed. It brings all of history to its climax and fulfillment. It establishes once and for all the public vindication and the glorification of Jesus Christ. It establishes kingdom. Advent is a season that reminds us of uh, staying alert, keeping watch, and wait with great expectation for the appearance of Christ. The appearance of Christ in the manger should lead us to the appearance of Christ in glory. 
The Church of Jesus Christ uh, is the in-between, in-between the Ascension and the Pentecost. The first century disciples were also uh, in an in-between time of not knowing. It is normal that in between we feel intense loneliness, abandonment and confusion. When you have to, uh, when, uh, have you felt that you were in an empty in between time, not knowing what would come next? How does your faith carry you through such experiences? This season help us to remember the fact that Jesus is the one who was and is to come. The arrival of the Holy One, the Son of Man, was and is and will be yet the greatest premiere the world has ever known. The people of Israel waited for, the genera for generations for the promised Messiah to arrive. Their uh, poetry, songs, stories, religion and politics and social life all focused on an awaited Savior, promised Messiah who would come and set them free from captivity, liberate them. The prophet and the psalmist promised them the Messiah is coming. Advent is a season in the life of the church to experience the waiting and the longing for the Messiah. Even while remembering and celebrating the first coming of the Messiah, the church also desires renewal and the coming of Christ in triumph and victory, the second coming of Christ in glory. The preparation is practical, spiritual, and uh, scriptural. Unfortunately, for some of us, it ends with decoration, shopping, eating, family get-together. Rem remember, it is also silence, prayer, reflection, scripture reading, retelling the stories, engaging in the sacramental life of the church. It is coming together as a community of faith. Advent is a time to make present for ourselves, our families, and the ancient expectancy of the Messiah by sharing in the long preparation for the Savior's coming. Advent is also a season of arrival, arrival of Christ in our hearts, in our world, and into God's extraordinary plan for our salvation. The church liturgically, uh, liturgical year starts with the first Sunday of Advent. Since the Middle Ages, the church focused Advent wreath, lighting candles, representing and reminding us of the message that Jesus is the light of the world. The evergreen uh, uh, bows reminds us of new and eternal life in Christ, the eternal Son of the Father. Advent is about the coming of Christ as we prepare and celebrate his coming in Bethlehem manger continually through the word and spirit. Let's prepare our hearts and minds and soul and our family, our get together. Let it all focus on the coming of God in glory. Jesus is the only hope for all the people. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is a wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the savior of us all. Today, we uh, light uh, candles, uh, a small dim light against the world that often seems uh, forbidding uh, and in darkness. We do this because we are people of hope, a people whose faith is marked by an expectation that we should always be ready for the coming of the Messiah, coming of the Master King. The joy and the participation of this season are captured beautifully in the antiphon of hope from a monastic liturgies. It says, I quote, see the ruler of the earth shall come. The Lord who will take uh, uh, from us the heavy burden of our exile. The Lord will come soon, will not delay. The Lord will make the darkest places bright. Lighting the flame, feeding the hungry, comforting the sick, reconciling the divided, praying for the repentant, greeting the lonely and forgotten, doing all these works hasten are his coming. The message is simple as a Jewish community and the world prepared for the coming of the Messiah. Let's prepare for his coming in glory. This is a time of reflection. Time for reflection. Time for celebration and worship. It is also time for service, gratitude and grace. We can embrace the true meaning of the holy season by giving to those less fortunate. Expressing our gratitude to uh, those we love. Extending grace to those that need it. 
as I welcome you to this season, uh, I also want to wish you, uh, wish you joy and peace during this holiday season. Throughout uh, Christian history, the church uh, has uh, practiced various acts of worship that set the season apart from ordinary time. These include fasting, hanging of greens, decorating a Christmas tree, singing Advent hymns, and uh, lighting an Advent wreath. Some of the uh, liturgies of the church says the Advent wreath is a symbol circle of evergreen branches, a sign of life without end. Its four Advent candles circle a central white Christ candle. For each of the four Sundays of Advent leading up to Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, a candle is lit symbolizing light shine into the darkness. Each week the light shines brighter as the growing number of candles are set ablaze. It culminates with the lighting of the central Christ candle on Christmas Eve, symbolizing the light of Christ coming into this world. Let's join our hearts together and prepare the way as we cry out, Come Lord Jesus, Mara Nava. Come Lord Jesus, in your glory, in your majesty, in your power, liberate us, for, forgive us, prepare our hearts for your coming. May God bless you with his words. Please pray with me. God, prepare our hearts for your coming. Bless our hearts. Fill us with your joy, peace, love. Help us in every way possible. We give you the glory and honor. We give you thanks. We invite you, O oh Father, to help us to come together. Let our gathering be focused on Christ and his coming. In Jesus' precious name, we offer this prayer. Amen.